when loser goes home, Earth I think a lot of teams kicker. would tend to uh, go towards an anti which is a, it's a safe strat. Yeah, definitely. And we haven't even mentioned Funic, but he's also a beast under pressure. And he's been quite impressive, at least I was very impressed by his blue performances, not especially, not necessarily at TI, but in the recent, in all the recent matches he played, so it's here not to be forgotten versus mm. uh, Navi. They do like to play that room other a lot. Yeah, well, they banned it. All right, they banned it <laughs> themselves. Yeah, I mean, I they think already the, have the Earthshaker pick up. is kind of like they've grabbed the Earthshaker. This is a potential so they, pick. But yeah, they potentially gave up on it already. I mean, Vici doesn't really run Earthshaker other than support. So I mean, mm, yeah, we haven't seen Ice Ice on Earthshaker. So yeah. it pretty much means like they're still they they are still looking for the offlane hero for Vici Gaming. So like the boot is something you don't want to get surprised by. Mm. So. <laughs> The noises for when heroes get banned are really loud in our ear, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Like when we cut to the draft, I'm generally <laughs> terrified when they ban Lesh. It's like, I'm like, what did I do? Is Paul angry? No. It's Lesh. Seb was trying to call the heroes by their grunts. I was like, that's very ambitious. Yeah, we should try <laughs> and right. that. And it was a blood seeker instead of an axe, but oh. I mean, you know, it was quite close. And when they say Earthshaker, I can, <laughs> uh, I can guess. Yeah, that's uh, relatively easy one. So there's still like the Radiant yeah. Shadow Fiend here open for Navi. They can still go for that if they want to. I mean, Anti Mage. Yeah, there, there you go. go. Wow. Good call. Yeah. There you go. So it's an Anti Mage for Hulls, which is, I think, fair enough in this type of game as well. When you play best of one, usually you want to play a bit more defensive. You don't want to yeah. go for the most risky plays. And playing versus Anti Mage kind of forces you to actually force the issue. And yeah. It's like that ultimate insurance you've got. It's like we've always got the anti mage to fall back on. Yeah, so anti mage Magnus is even more. <laughs> yeah, we, we might see a Magnus. Yeah. Then this Magnus is very good. It's a little bit scary a matchup versus Queen of Pain, but I think they ran anti mage plus PA, except PA just doesn't really cut it super, super late because I don't think uh, Blur is as strong as having Blink and Mana Shield, but mm. it, it didn't work out for them and it looked like it was because of the PA pick, so. Now Vichy Gaming has to adapt a bit, and this is when they're gonna start, you know, giving a direction to their their draft and like the game they wanna. So do, they wanna you, play do you think at this stage with with Corp and Earthshaker that they say, okay, well we'll, we'll pick our own ultra late game yeah. insurance, or do we say screw it, let's just? There's not that many good mid. options. <laughs> like yeah. Phantom Lancer is, I think, one of the late gamers that people tend to, but it's actually very poor for Saint Mage because mm. he does very well against illusion based heroes. Um, aside from that, I mean there's not that many hard or like hard late game carries that can actually deal with the anti mage. Yeah. Especially with a with a Magnus. But there's a really big in the pool now. Interesting. That's a Lina pick. But I mean it could it could be a support or a mid we've seen Dandy on Lina for sure, like many times, but it could also be a support. I mean this draft is I don't know if it was LGD drafting a Navi lineup or Navi now drafting an LGD lineup. Mm. I think it's like also uh, more Navi's the second option, yeah. but still, this is a, like exactly what LGD has been drafting the whole. I, I mean, whenever they could, right? Yeah. But Lina does also support Dusk off lane, anti mage carry, and looking for a mid laner. Yeah, I mean, Lina still can go mid lane in the sense that it's really good versus Corp. You have a really good matchup, and your if your cores are Tusk and Lina, you have two cores that make a lot of space, and there's going to be a lot of room for anti mage to actually farm the whole map. Definitely. It is, though, a Corp with a Shaker backup, most likely, as we said, since we're not expecting a Shaker off lane, so it does put quite a lot of pressure on the opposite mid laner, but um, Lina is definitely one of the heroes that can deal with that. Yeah, she can definitely hold her own against that. Like going back to clear stacks and whatnot. Shadow Fiend. And that's an SF pick, so it's going to be a co-op safe lane. This is a very secret lineup. In, yeah, in this team secret Shadow sense. Fiend. Yeah, they have very strong like early to mid game like lineup. Very strong at team fighting and and team H doesn't want to fight too early. So this kind of lineup could actually make the game really hard, like put a lot of pressure onto the anti mage and his team, especially against this sort of lineup. So I think I like the approach that VGA are going for right now against the AM. Yeah, it's, it can be quite scary for Navi, and I don't feel like they have that, you know, super good mana break, a mana void uh, target. Yeah, like when you play versus Storm, anti mage can always, you know, come, come in the fight, just get an extra, you know, an easy kill on the Storm, get, the, get his, like, killing spree or whatever. Here it's gonna be harder to find a target to kill easily with anti mage. Yeah, I mean I guess like Quap and everything you might. That's that's probably the best target he has. Have to uh, hope she doesn't just blink out and then yeah. just stand in there. Yeah, it's a tricky one. Definitely. 
They don't have the best catch for him though. I mean, Coop might go for Orchid or might not, but yeah. they don't have the best catch for n Like So their game plan is definitely to pressure as a team. Just go hit the towers and force n to like come back and fight. So VG Gaming still looking to go for their last ban here. Looking at Navi's lineup, it's kind of hard to determine whether the Lina is a support or is a core. Like, Navi can just rotate their lanes and rolls very easily. So Undying ban, so they're predicting a Lina mid, yeah. I would assume. That's one of the interesting things about Lina is it gives you that chance. That is oh, there is a wish. That is actually something that uh, I think this is the first time Navi have picked up the hero in the event. They're very good at using Wisp. So Neko is insanely good on the hero, and I think it's a fighting anti-mage. What I see is a fighting anti-mage, and when you think about it, if he maxes mana shield, then he's actually, with the help of Dazzle and Wisp, he can be a terror. Like, if he goes for... Hovost is also known for the Vlad's Vanguard build, into I just go and fight people, I max mana... Um, that fourth pick with Lino is actually either very smart. Well, it's smart either way, because it's either forced them to throw out and dying, or they've actually predicted that they would probably think that they wanted to remove Undying so they could actually pick the Wisp. So either way, it's a really smart pick in four. They won't oh, wow. All right, that's interesting. It's going to be pop off, off lane yeah. pop with Earthshaker. Like in, it's very interesting that in the sense that it's going to be very good in the lane to pressure the aim. The lanes are very important, yeah. and they're hard to guess for both teams. They absolutely are. Right, we are almost ready. Players are ready. We're ready. It's going to be a fantastic matchup between Na'Vi and Vici Gaming. It's time to join our commentators. It's the Prince of Denmark and the Vicar of Pixels. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the second elimination match of the day. Vici Gaming versus Na'Vi. I think there's a lot of people very excited about this matchup, and, and I certainly are seeing especially well, as we're going to be able to see how Hal pulls off the Luna. Yeah, there's a couple of really interesting picks in this matchup. I don't think anyone expected the IO last pick. I don't think anyone expected the Luna. You saw the panel, they thought it was a safe lane Queen of Pain. Now the last pick would go to Ice Ice Ice. So both teams with a little bit of a mind game here in the draft. Uh, I think Matt brings up a very good point. How, how the lanes get put could have a much bigger impact on this game than other games we've seen today, I think. The, the Luna is a very... Like a very risky carry in lane because she has she's a glass cannon, right? She enables the other heroes in the in the lane to do a lot of damage because of lunar blessing. But at the same time, if she gets open on, can be gone in the blink of an eye. So now we definitely have heroes that can put on the aggression. So very curious to see how this laning stage works out. That said, I personally favor Vici's draft uh, oh, really? quite a bit okay. here. Okay. I think. The issue for Navi is they don't have a natural combination with the with the IO. Maybe they can make it work very well with Tusk. Uh, as Matt pointed out, if they go for a fighting anti mage, that's like an all-in play. If that doesn't work very early on, they're going to get super out carried by a Luna and Shadow Feed if the anti mage doesn't oh, go battle look at here, this. right? Level one so. smoke. They've got the Tusk. He's incredibly strong. He's just noble. Out. How? If a fish is coming out, onto three. How? It's going to be fine for the time being. And funny. The force is an echo turn. Their attention towards super funny here. Looking for the body block. He's going to be able to find it here. Can they chase this one down? It doesn't look like they can. And even though Na'Vi get a nice wrap around there with the smoke gang, nothing to come of it. And maybe VG can try and turn this one around. Snaker's hanging about. We'll be able to tether himself back over. Telekinesis an eight. Funny do have a fissure. He's got a snowball. I mean... He's oh, he's stuck! He's stuck! He's stuck! He's got a snowball, but it's not going to save him! It's going to go back in, but I don't think he gets himself out of this one. Funny, oh, the heal in front from Arstall, but no, Telekinesis! He gets slammed down, and it's going to be VG finding the first blood there against the Tusk. Very and on Ice 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 as well. At the very least for Navi, they do get one of the runes. If you lose a level 1 fight, often you will lose both runes, but Soneko managed to grab the top rune on the way out. Secures him his bottle. It's very, very crucial for Navi. As they get off to... I don't want to say this is a bad start. It's not that horrible for them, but Ice 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 getting the first blood on his offlane Queen of Pain will give him more of a chance at fighting the Anti-Mage. As it looks for Navi so far, they're looking to play a little bit of a mid-wisp here, maybe stacking uh, for Dendi and maybe even pulling the mid lane to uh, try to limit Super's impact on the game. Dendi might need some help. I mean, yeah, we've got the back of Snake, and as you said, the early box is going to be very nice in lane here for Dendi. They're trying to outlane Super. Super going to walk into a light strike array there. And it's going to be interesting to see how this lane pans out in terms of who is going to come out on top in terms of CS between the SF and the lead. This should be this should be an unwinnable lane for Vici Gaming if the if the Wisp and Lina play well together. 
Uh, Shadow Fiend, with only the help of Shaker, should not be able to get a, a good foothold in this lane. Lina can just play up very aggressively, even if they get a good Fissure. Until Shadow Fiend is level 5, realistically, three raises will not be able to kill Dendi with a bottle and overcharge. So, looking for Navi to win this lane. And uh, as far as bottom lane goes, should also be a Navi victory here with the 2 on 1 lane. Of course, SSI did get the first blood, so helps a little bit in that regard. And then top lane should be absolute free farm for Hal. I mean, cannot contest. What is the plan with Hal here on the Luna? Is it the fact that Vichy, they want to get the mech onto the SF, and as soon as that happens, when they group up, they're going to have Hal with that aura, with that extra damage, and with that extra pushing power. Oh, wait, they've managed to oh, actually oh, block the mech entirely in mid. At the same time, Dendi might get the kill oh, on he, he gets it, Dendi, with the kill onto Super. Suneko only just getting himself out. Yes, not Vichy turning that one around very nicely. No. Damn, so 1-1 one, one now on the board, Dendi, as you said, he's having a very good time in the mid lane, look at the CS, 9 for 3 on your Lina compared to the 2 for 0 on an SF, and it's a dead SF as well. This is a great start for Navi in the mid lane, making up for the, the first flood going the way of the Queen of Pain. As far as the top lane goes, you asked what I think the Luna should go for, I believe. Uh, yes, Sam, what was the plan here with her? I think just the, the standard early impact build with uh, treads into optional drums and then Helm of the Dominator to stack camps and just look to farm. Because, uh, to be honest with you, I think if this just becomes a farm game and it just, just slows down, both teams are getting good farm, Luna can almost keep up with an Anti-Mage's farm if she gets complete free farm. You max the Glaives, you stack camps, you farm really fast. In addition to that, you have a Shadow Fiend and a Quaff that scale very well. On the side of Navi, if Lina has a good game, can become fearsome, even super late game. But, uh, it is very possible that Vichy are looking to, to slow play a bit here. Yeah, as you said, it's going to be all about this kind of Luna versus... But I <laughs> okay, this is, this is a little weird, because I just said how would go for an early impact build, right? Um, I think treads are more or less mandatory. Treads or phase, I think we've seen how played before. And it's because Luna has like two phases. When she gets her ultimate very early, when she's level 7, she's really strong if she, with her spells. And it's all about getting in position and not getting burst down. That's why you get a bit of health. And then, generally in the mid game, you slow down a little bit more. You try to focus on farming up the big core items so you can go into the late game. If you go for the full greedy build, where you don't get any sort of stat items, but just go, say, Mask of Madness or Midas, it's pretty risky, because then maybe Navi can just take full advantage of the early game and run you over with a good mid lane performance. Yeah, so, I mean, Seneca at the moment is flying levels here on the IO. He's level 3 already here, soaking up a bit of XP from the mid lane. So we're going to have to relocate our line in, in fairly good time. Dendi's still in the mid, 20 for 8 against the 9 for 0. The SF is having such a hard time, and he's really going to have to rely on stacks that hopefully the rest of his team are creating for him in the jungle. As you see, Ephemera is starting to work on it with the help of F1, and he needs this to be able to close that yes. gap that Dendi's creating. Absolutely. This mid lane is going very well for Navi. And that's expected. Said Vichy Gaming probably can't win this lane. They were pretty close to getting the kill on the IO, which would have made a world of difference for the Shadow Fiend, but it didn't happen. So Navi are continuing their absolute dominance of this lane. Dendi, one of the absolute best mid laners at lane control. Just freezing the lane, holding it still, farming on his own cliff. Uh, very naturally gets many denies in the mid lane for that reason. And you just see Super, he's actually... <laughs> He's not even going to raise the wave. How often do you see a Shadow Fiend not wanting to do that in minute four? He's going to go into the jungle immediately instead. Level four trying to raise for the big camp. You generally don't want to do this before level five, sometimes maybe even seven, because this is very mana inefficient, the damage you get per mana cost. But it feels like he has no other choice. It's certainly going to be a slow start for Super. But you look at Beachy and the fact they have got Ice 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 on this quad. He's going to be able to do a lot across the map. Once he gets to level 6 online, he's going to be able to start making those rotations. And maybe even in situations where oh, they're going to... He might actually even be able to threaten Art Style quite a bit here. He could force over a rotation from Kovost, which will happen. He's going to have to leave the wave for a bit. And I'll let him mana break the most. Surprised Kovost doesn't actually blink for that and try to get a couple of extra right clicks in. He's going to run at him instead. Maybe even force Ice 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 to use that haste rune, exactly. That's 